Hey everyone, welcome back again to another interesting Tosca lesson. Today we are going to talk about the last action mode, which is called wait on. Now we have discussed all the remaining action modes. And in the last session, I talked about how you can use the buffer action mode. So what is this action mode wait on? It is a way Tosca implements the dynamic weight in its test cases. So the wait on action mode basically interrupts the execution of your test case until the indicated property has the specified value, which means the condition which you have specified in your test step should be satisfied and then the execution will continue. So it's a dynamic mechanism of waiting, not a static mechanism. And Tricentis recommends to use this particular action mode whenever you want to wait for any particular condition within your application or any particular control uh, which is not visible. So things like that. Now this wait time can be defined in the settings called synchronization timeout during wait on. Okay. And to show you that, let's go to settings. Okay, so under settings, you need to go into T box and under T box, you have to go to synchronization. There you will find the setting called synchronization timeout during wait on. So by default, uh, it will be around 20,000 milliseconds, but you can either increase or decrease this. Okay, so coming to the action mode wait on and how this can be used. So we are going to pick up a uh, Tricentis obstacle. Okay, so this is the obstacle course uh, website from Tricentis where you will find different uh, challenges which you can work on. And one of these obstacles is uh, you have to click on the button calculate. Okay, and after some time, the send button gets visible or enabled. So after that, you need to click on it to complete this obstacle. So it's basically clicking of two buttons, but the thing is the send button is not enabled at the beginning, okay? So once I click on calculate, you see this progress bar, it's going to increase. And after a certain point, the send button is going to be enabled. And when this will be enabled, we need to click on the send button, okay? So here uh, you can see that it's not a straightforward scenario. Right now, the send button is enabled and I can click on it. So that will complete my obstacle. But as I said, it's not a pretty simple or straightforward scenario because you cannot directly go ahead and click on calculate and then you can click on send. Obviously, one way around is you can calculate the time it is taking to uh, load or to enable the send button and you can put a static weight, okay? but that's not the efficient way of doing it. The most efficient way of doing this is to put a weight on, on this particular button, okay? And until this is enabled, uh, Tosca will wait. So no matter uh, if this particular bar or the time changes in the future, your test case will still run. But uh, in the case of static weight, uh, your test case will always wait for that amount of time which is not at all efficient. And also it uh, increases the execution time in the whole uh, scenario, right? So let's go ahead and work on this. So first we need to create a module and I already have a obstacle folder. So I'm going to insert a module inside this, okay? So let's scan this application. We just need to add two controls in this module. And those are the two buttons. So we are going to select this application and then we are going to scan the controls. So here you can see uh, I've got two buttons, calculate and send, and I'm going to select both of them, okay? So that's all I need to do on the module section. And I'm going to close this. So that's going to create my obstacle, right? Um, and let's give it a proper name. So we will call it 
three three six seven eight, right? Okay, so that's our module and let's go to the test cases section. And here we have got our action modes, right? So we are going to create a new test case here and we are going to call it um, the wait on, okay? Wait on test. And here um, we are going to pull up that particular module which we have created. So I'm searching for obstacle 33678. And now the first step is to obviously, we just need to click on this particular calculate button. So that's our first step. Uh, and then we need to wait for this button to be enabled, right? So let's add another step here. And here we will be using the action mode wait on, okay? So let's add this again. And this time around, I am going to use the action mode wait on, okay? And you will see uh, the wait on action mode has got a different color. It's yellow in the background, okay? Also, we need to put a condition here because the wait on depends on the condition being satisfied for the particular control, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to say, um, enabled equals to true. Okay, so since it is disabled now, when it, when this particular button is enabled, the wait on will be satisfied and the execution will continue. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and first change this test steps. So I will say click calculate and then wait for send enable. Okay, and then we'll add our final step to click on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that as well. And here finally, I'm going to click on that particular button, right? So I will say click send. So this is um, the whole test case you can see. So there are basically three steps. First, we click on calculate, then we use the wait on to wait for that button to be enabled, and then we go ahead and click on it, okay? Let's go ahead and execute this in Scratchbook, and let's see if it works. So it clicks on the calculate button, and as you can see, it is going to wait until this progress bar completes or the send button is basically enabled. That's the condition we have put. So it's going to wait until that. And then once it's enabled, it's going to click on it, okay? So it's a pretty simple obstacle or a scenario once you know how to use wait on, but whenever or for whichever scenario you have to put some synchronization or you have to wait for some particular controls on the page, uh, no matter what, just try to use this particular uh, wait on mechanism or some other dynamic mechanism available in Tosca rather than using uh, the T box wait, which is a static wait. So whatever time you provide in that wait, it will wait for that time, no matter even if your control is already available. So which is not an efficient way of doing it. And also it's not a best practice. So keep this in mind when you are automating your scenarios in Tosca and try to use the wait on action mode um, whenever you are working with synchronization or timeout issues. So that's all for this particular session. Uh, in the next session, we'll be continuing with some more interesting features of Tosca.